This lesson is how to apply a crepe hair beard. However, one doesn't just simply apply crepe hair beards by themselves, you use them as part of a complete makeup. And so this will also be a complete makeup doing Vladimir Ilyich Ulanov, normally known as Lenin, the father of the Soviet Union. And uh, I will include not only the crepe hair beard, but a revised version of uh, wax nose and a middle-aged character makeup done reverse sex. So I'm going to do uh, historical dead person makeup that will also include a crepe hair beard and a wax nose and so on. So you can see how each of these lessons builds on one another. For a crepe hair beard, you use crepe hair. Crepe hair is in fact wool. Wool um, that has been formed into a little braid held together with strings that holds it in a position to make it curly. In order to use the crepe hair for beard, you take it out of the little strings and stretch it out. Uh, if you want an extremely kinky beard, and most beards are not as extremely kinky as it will come straight out of the braid, uh, but if you want an extremely kinky beard, you can just take it out, cut it, and use it as is. However, for most beards, what you want is neither one that's completely straight nor one that's completely kinky, but something partway between those two, because most beards are in, have a little bit of curl to them, but are not completely Brillo pad kind of thing. So what you do is you take the strings and loosen them and take the uh, wool out of the braid and then you run it either over a steam kettle like so. Uh, there's a very elaborate thing that you can do where you get it wet and you tie it to two sticks and hold it to dry overnight. This is way more trouble than you ever need to go to. Uh, and if you have a steam iron, particularly the kind of industrial street steam iron you have in theatrical costume shops, you simply go and stretch it out a bit and run the steam iron over it. I know any number of people who will tell you in makeup that if you do this you will get a dreadful thing with your crepe hair beard. I have done this for years, my students have done it for years, and the results are quite lovely. So I think it's just a question of how practiced you are with the iron and whether or not you're using an industrial steam iron that puts a lot of steam into it or something that's just a little home iron that you're ironing it till it's dead. You don't want to iron it till it's dead. You want to stretch it out a little bit, steam it, and just take a little bit of the kink out. And Once you've gone and taken your uh, crepe hair wool and stretch it out so that it has a little bit of kink left but not too much. You then cut it off from the main braid and you take little bits of it and make it into shorter pieces, which I will now do. Um, to do this you need scissors and to affix it to your face you will need spirit gum. Um, those are the most obvious ingredients that you need for a crepe hair beard in addition to your regular makeup. However, there are two other ingredients you need to remember for when you're doing a crepe hair beard that are in fact the most important things to making a successful crepe hair beard. They are a dry towel and a wet towel. The reason you need this is just as with the wax nose, you have to be cleaning your fingers between every step. You have to be cleaning the table that you're working at between every step. You have to go and get all the little extra fibers of the crepe hair wool and get it away from <laughs> any part of your makeup and any part of things like nose wax or spirit gum, except when you're directly sticking it to your face because this is wool, and once you cut it into small pieces, little tiny fibers of it will constantly be coming off. And they will try and climb into your makeup, they will try and get into the nose wax, they will go and get everywhere. So, what you need to do 
is to compartmentalize in your mind every little step you're doing, and between each step, you want to clean your fingers and clean your table with either the wet towel or the dry towel or both. You keep them on either side of you, and you use them to make sure that this stuff does not get everywhere, and that the spirit gum does not get everywhere. This is why, at this point, though I'm using colors for my makeup, they still have the lids on. I'm not going to even open that makeup until I have completely finished putting on the beard and doing all the steps necessary for that. So, the same thing for the nose wax. I don't want to go and have that have anything to do with what's happening with the beard because the little bits of wool get everywhere. That is the most important thing to remember. So, the next thing is I will go and take this and using scissors I will cut it into short bits. Now, you don't really need to go and use very long bits. So for instance, if I wanted a beard that was this long, I would probably make these bits just a hair longer than that so I can trim. And this is a fairly short piece. This is about an inch and a half, not quite two inches. Um, and yet this will be much longer than I'll actually need and I will trim it up. So you want short bits like this. And then you want to take each of those bits and break them off into very small sections, like so. And as you do that, all the little pieces of extra are going to try and come off. So you're going to take those and put them down on your table one at a time, and you're going to make the excess stuff go away. This is not something you want to do in the middle of your parents' living room. At least not unless you're very good about vacuuming afterwards or your mother will kill you. Very messy. So, I'm going to take those little pieces. Actually, that one's too big. I'm going to take that, make that half again. And the reason you're doing this is both for wigs and for beards, if you want them to look realistic, you have to go and make sure that the most important thing is airspace. Beards, when they grow, grow in lots and lots of little hair follicles out on your face, and they form into a very fluffy thing as a whole, but they're not like this. They're not thick. They're not all pulled together like a ponytail. They're actually very diffuse and very filled with air which is one of the reasons that so many men up here in Alaska have a tendency to grow them in winter. It provides very nice face insulation because of all the airspace. So you're looking to go and form these into very small sections because you're going to put them fairly far apart and make it so that most of your beard is airspace. Once you've cut up your pieces into smaller pieces and spread them out into little tiny pieces like this, uh, you're going to want to start putting spirit gum onto your face in small sections. Now, to do this, this is an example of something you really need to have a rendering before you do it. You want to know where you're going to be putting your spirit gum and how it's going to fit in with the makeup because you want to be able to plan ahead for the parts go on. Now, for a beard, most beards, they tend to grow from the center here and then move out and up. So you start here. If you have one that's fairly full underneath, you actually start at the point of the chin underneath and work up and out and out, and out. But mostly you're just going to start right along there. For a mustache, it works the other way. It goes out here and moves in, because most people take their mustaches and push them to either side. That way they can grow them into strange little spirals, like the man at Fred Meyer, who looks like Mr. Wogglebug, and <laughs> 
The beards, on the other hand, get pulled in. So because the direction of growth is that way, you're going to start out with spirit gum here and here. You want to put a fairly reasonable amount of that on. Not so thick that it takes too long to dry, but not so little that it dries too fast for you to get along there. You then have the exciting thing of watching, well, not even watching paint dry, watching spirit gum dry, which is even more dull because you can't even see it like paint. It's just a little bit of shine that you're seeing on either side here, down here. Depending on the climate, you will find that it dries at different speeds. If you have a very hot, dry climate, it dries faster. If you have a cold, wet climate, it takes longer. Uh, it's not something that you can say, oh, well, it will always, 30 seconds later, be ready. You don't know that. However, you do feel it periodically. And once it becomes sticky, you have a very small window of time in which to go and stick on your hair. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, and I'm now going to do the next step, which is I'm going to spread the top end of it. If it gets uneven at the top when I'm doing that, I can also go and use the scissors to take a little bit of the edge off of that and put a piece here. Stick it into the goo. I now have goo covered fingers, so it goes on to the wet towel. Next little piece of hair. Oh, my little piece of hair has bits that are falling off. Uh, I think I'm going to work on a bigger piece of hair. It doesn't have so much bits falling off. And I'm going to trim it a little. And it's already spread out. I'll put that here. Parts of that are not wanting to stick. I pull those off and I use the wet towel to clean those parts off of my fingers. Cut it down again. Loose, loose bits. You don't give it a full firm tug. If you give it a firm tug while it's still drying, uh, it will simply come off. In fact, if you give a really firm tug to it, it'll come off once it's fully dried. Uh, that's, in fact, how you remove it at the end. So, you basically pull it off your face. So you're just trying to gently pull away the loose bits. And you're pushing them to either side. Now, as you can see here, the ends of the mustache are much longer and I'm actually going to do on Lennon. He has a little short one that goes down to either corner of the mouth. However, because I'm cutting all the pieces in the same size and I'm going to need the center pieces to go uh, a bit further, I'm going to go and put on the pieces and then trim it after the fact. So you make it a little bit longer than you need. Don't do too much. So. Next section, I'm going to go and do a bit more on the beard here, this time above on the chin, and on the mustache, the next row in. I can see here it's trying to stick to my fingers, the parts that came off. That's why I need the wet towel. Get those pieces off of my fingers so that they don't interfere with the other parts. Since his mustache does not go straight out, it goes a little bit at an angled up and down. I don't want to make it go straight in. I want to have the hair go at that kind of angle. 
pulling loose bits. Cutting an angle and cleaning my fingers between every single step. More spirit gum. Here's another problem you get. Little threads of the wool getting into the brush of the spirit gum. Second you see that, you want to go and pull it out. Because otherwise, when you apply the spirit gum the next time, it'll have that little piece on it, which will have become soaked in spirit gum and try flying on different parts other than the tip of your brush, because it's like an extension on the brush. And while you're doing a beard, one of the important things to remember is not only do you want the stuff to be fairly sparse, but in places where it's going to be very short, for instance, many people, Lennon included, would have a beard that had maybe quarter inch, half inch hairs down here, and then around here it would be cut shorter so that it was a little like extra long five o'clock shadow. It was very short along the sides. On those short areas, what you're going to want to do is not do it with this stuff, since obviously you can't, with a significant portion of it sticking on, you can't make it that short. So what you're going to need to do is take those sections and use a stipple sponge or brushwork to go and suggest that. And this is one of the things that can actually make your beard much more convincing, plus make it so that you're spending less time and less of your face uh, getting spirit gum and this itchy wool on it because you can use the paint to blend the stylized paint of your makeup into the beard and give verisimilitude to the beard even though it's made out of a fairly thin amount of the crepe hair. This is to follow the shape of the beard from Lennon's portrait sitting in the country next to Stalin. At this point I now have the beard put in. As you can see it's rather sparse, it isn't uh, a lot of hair. You're just using the hair, as you were using with the nose and the wart and so on, to give a little bit of extra dimension to what you're doing, because mostly what you're going to do for the beard is actually little brush strokes and bits of using a stipple sponge. So you're not actually trying to go and uh, do the whole part of the, the beard, you're just trying to make the dimensional parts. So, uh, the next step is to go and trim it to shape. So on the tip of the beard, I'm not actually needing it that long. I'm going to do some big rough cuts just to shorten it. And then a little bit more delicate cutting to trim it. Okay. Now that is the crepe hair beard part of the lesson. Now, the next thing I do is I make sure that I get absolutely every bit of crepe hair off of this table and off of me, other than the part that's sticking on my face. Once I've done that, all of that is out of the way, then I work on the nose. And again, I want to go and put spirit gum over the part. I? Now sometimes when I do Lennon's nose, I don't even bother with the wax because he's one that is close enough to my own nose that I can go and usually do it with paint. But I would like you to see a makeup that uses both of those things, uh, nose, beard, and still, still, there is a hair that has managed to work its way into the spirit gum. These little woolly hairs want to be everywhere. So I'm going to let that dry and take the wax, which has been kept out of the way of all possible bits of uh, uh, crepe hair, 
and pull some out, same way I did for the witch nose. As you can see, it's very soft. It's formed into a mess. And I'll pull that off of the end of my brush and form it into a little ball. My fingers. Parts of this have gone black. I don't know why. It's fresh nose wax. <laughs> it's sticking to my fingers. So, making it into a little ball. Put the ball down. Clean the fingers using the wet towel the dry towel, and the wet towel, now take the ball, what I'm mainly trying to do is widen and lengthen the nose very slightly, so I'm going to make this into A little sausage. Like so. Clean my fingers again and then apply the sausage to the spirit gum. Just sort of tucked it on. I haven't done anything exciting to it yet. Now, start pushing it into my face. There's something kind of funny about Lennon's nose. Lennon's nose is about average size, sort of median, a little wide, flat longish but not um, hooked or anything. Just sort of a wide, flat, not particularly large or particularly small Russian nose. And slightly rounded, not very uh, angular features in the photos that you see of him. However, a lot of the images of Lenin were done as propaganda images and were done after he died. And in Russian culture, a large nose is sometimes regarded somewhat the way a large shoe size is in America. That is to say, it connotes virility. And so you'll note in some of the ones done after his death that somehow all of his features become a bit sharper. And his nose, in particular, seems to get a bit bigger. So, the sort of legendary status of Lenin gives him a somewhat sharper nose in his later uh, renditions in art, as if after his death, when they didn't have the reality of Lenin uh, facing them, they made a sort of alternate reality of him as the extra virile father of the Soviet Union. So his nose gets sharper in the later images <laughs> and seems a little bit larger. It's not enough of a change that it, you know, is no longer recognizably him, but it is a bit stronger than <laughs> you note in photographs. He also has a much more severe countenance in these lighter images, whereas when you see photographs of him, uh, he, he usually smiles for the camera. He has this 
very amiable face for somebody who sent that many people to gulags to die. Um, sort of go, why are you so happy? Yeah, somehow or another some black got into there. I don't know. So, here I've gone and added a little more late linen nose to it. For a fairly realistic makeup as compared to the witch that has a nose that's not at all intended to be realistic. Now, I'm going to get the spirit gum off of my fingers and on to the next step, which is the actual makeup, which now I'm going to take the lids off, that there's no spirit gum, no icky anything to get into it. Uh, now, I have chosen for my base something that is a little more sallow, because he had a somewhat more sallow complexion. And making that small concession to reality. And I'm going to put on the base. This time I'm using a cream makeup over the nose. So again, I'm putting it on the nose last. And I'm putting it near the beard, but I'm not really like working it in. What this means is if you're using a color that is extremely different from your face color, you are kind of stuck to put it down before you put down your beard, which makes it harder for the beard to stick. Um, which is one of the downsides to doing that. But this is close enough to my skin tone that it's not so obvious. Okay, now I'm going to take the base, this is a cream base, and I'm going to cover over the wax base. This time, instead of rubbing it on, I'm patting it on, just like I did the other one. And oof, trying to get it in all the places up there. So he's a little bit more yellowish looking than I am. He's been out in the sun in August mushrooming. <sighs> Better portion of Russian government shuts down for August so that everybody can go mushrooming. Fun things. So, also using my highlight and shadow, I'm now going to paint in uh, designs that are suggestive of what he looks like in photographs. Uh, a couple of things about his face are similar to my own. He has pretty close to the same eyebrows. Uh, the only difference is his go down, uh, there's less space between here and here uh, on him. So I'm going to end up needing to take that darkening effect that I have from doing this and making sure that I get that in on him. He's got as it makes the eyebrows look lower. little bit more that comes from the center here, like that. So. And 
that connects those two, which is another thing that makes it so that the eyebrows appear a little bit lower toward the center. Now, um, more on the shadows. Uh, he also has this pleat thing. Uh, he has a more visible eyelid, though. So the pleat thing goes like this. And you have a bit of white that shows underneath. A visible eyelid is where you can see that fold in an eye, where you can see stuff. And I have deep set eyes, which don't lend themselves to that. So I'm actually painting in something as though I've got that extra fold that he does have, or did. And it's a little bit of an age line running up. As I say, he smiled a lot for Somebody who managed to kill that many people. Uh, and now this is a section of the face where I'm having to go and follow the lines of my own face and kind of ignore to a certain extent his because while he has bags under his eyes, they do not follow the exact same shape as mine do. Uh, but if I move mine too much, or even a little for where the bottom is, it's going to be um, a lot less convincing the moment I move my face. So I can't do too much of that. I'm going to take this lower one away. A bit more. One that goes out straight. tend to go out straighter than that. So, and kind of a indent here. Now, on the nose, it has a bit of an indent up here. Not that much, but as I say, if I have a section like this on a nose that I know is going to crack anyway, and I have a reason that I can put a line there, which will help hide that crack when it occurs. Uh, so much the better. And he does have uh, occasions in photos where you see a little line there. So I'm going with that. Uh, the other thing I'm going to do is the same thing that I would do if I were just using paint on the nose, is I'm going to make the nose wider by putting the shadow further out. As a rather wide, flat nose, a little bit like a cat. So in addition to getting the more depth, I'm going to get a little bit more width. I think in the interest of making that more believable, I will squash this a bit more. That goes with it a bit better. Now, he has a bit more nostrils than I do. Well, you can't really make your nostrils bigger. You can't go and, well, you can do it with latex, but you can't go and do it with wax. It will just fall off because your nostrils move too much. However, you can make them appear more prominent by making sure to shadow the outer section. And highlight the nostrils. That gives you a little bit more nostril. The other thing is he has uh, larger nostrils than I do. So, in this case, I'm going to use the brown 